Hey guys, uh, we didn't always have the best connection in this, so bear with uh, uh, the audio in this interview, but uh, I want to thank Jazzy Gabbert and uh, enjoy what we got out of this interview here with the alpha female Jazzy Gabbert. She did say she's going to come back soon, so we can't wait for that. Enjoy the interview. Jazzy, how are you tonight? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for fans for listening to this one. Yeah, you've been uh, highly requested. Uh, you know, once the Mae Young Classic got announced here in the U.S., there was a lot of, you know what I mean, nerdy wrestling fans looking up every single competitor. Yeah. You know, so once everybody started looking up the competitors, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah they they, uh -huh. they they gained a lot of interest in you. But you've been doing this a while, though, because you've popped up here or there for years, I feel like, right? Yeah, I'm doing this for a while, but I'm widely unknown to the American fans, which makes me really sad because I busted my butt uh, 15 years now, no, 17 years. I started training in 2000, and 2001 I had my first match in Germany. Yeah, that I, I tell people that some people are don't know that. Like you said, like a lot of people uh, don't mm -hmm. realize you've been doing it that long. Um, there's only a few people that, that know, you know what I mean? It's uh, only only recently, and you probably know this, but only recently are the... Uh, is the American audience kind of starting to pick up on what what happens in Europe and in Germany even and you know sometimes even in Japan over the last couple of years so I, I think yeah. you're getting way more exposure now too because people over here are starting to search over there for the first time yeah. we, years ago you probably looked over here for stuff yeah yeah absolutely I mean it's a shame you know like because I'm almost at the end of my career I mean to be honest how much longer I can do this right so and I focus back in my career like in my life on Japanese wrestling because I was always like a huge fan and when I had the opportunity to go to stardom to Japan I was like yeah let's do this but of course like promotion wise and getting to know I should have choose America I guess because that's just the more or the bigger fan base Right. You know, the first time I heard about you was because of, um, or w one of the times I heard about you recently was uh, Terry uh, Terry Runnels told me that she had met you uh, recently mm. at a convention. Germany, so. yeah. We, yeah, that's true. Like, we met in Germany a few years back. I think it was like 2007 or something. And then I saw her again on a wrestling show. You know how it is. Like, the wrestling is like a big family and you meet. It's like a reunion on all the shows. So somehow you see the wrestlers everywhere you go. So when you um when you started out, you mm -hmm. just decided were you ever thinking I'm gonna go over to try to go in America, or you just really kind of always stuck to, you know, locally in Germany. I mean, I know you went to Japan for a while as well. Mm -hmm. um, what was it? Was there ever a yeah, game plan? Uh, not really. I mean, when I like when I found wrestling, I was ten years old, and I found WCW, and I was a huge fan. Like I knew from the very beginning that I want to be involved in the wrestling industry. I never ever thought myself to be a wrestler, to be honest. Um, but then I found wrestling in Germany. I didn't even know it, it it existed. I always thought there's only this wrestling I see on TV. Um, so I went from show to show in Germany, and then I went over to England. And then in England, I had a show with Pro Wrestling Eve, and there were Japanese people on it, and they kind of scouted me. So they gave me a phone call. I said, hey, do you want to come to Japan? And of course I wanted, you know, I wanted to go to many places as possible. And I also had like a TNA run, and I would have loved to go to America, but in America, you know, there's a visa issue. Like if you don't have a work visa, you cannot work in America. So I guess that was most of the time the problem. Oh wow! So the, the not having the visa was a problem. Yeah, like I I know that some of the European guys risk it and go without a visa, but you know if they if they catch you, you're banned for five years. I know it happened to like a Canadian wrestler. Uh, so why would it not happen to me? I thought, and my goal, of course, like it was always WWE. Like this was my dream, and I had few trials, and unfortunately, they never really wanted me. Um, but yeah, my dream was always um, America. Like I love to go to Shine or Shima, but then again, you know, I don't don't have sponsors who pay the flight to go there, and then also again the visa issue. So yeah, I guess that's why I choose Japan because they provided my visa for me. Yeah, that's crazy. I know a lot of people that have come here that didn't have an issue. But so, you, is it that you would say America is actually one of the tougher places to come to because of of the working visa. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I oh, really wow. would love to move to America. And I always th- said, if I find an American boyfriend, I will marry him straight away. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, I mean, you never know. Maybe it still can happen. I have some contacts now from America who said that they're going to help me with the visa. So, hey, maybe 2018 is my year. I hope so. I always say that. Like when the year is ending, I say next year is going to be my year. And I kind of managed to grow stronger and stronger with my fan base and with the with the bookings I get. So hey, you never know what 2018 will bring for the alpha female. Well, what happened with um? I mean, how, how did it go with with WWE contacting you for the Mae Young Classic? I mean, with you got over here for that and you were able to be here for that. Um, mm-hmm. How did, how was that different than in the past when you tried to come here? Uh, it was different. Like, for example, I did now Ryzen, uh, the MMA thing. I did some MMA matches and I signed a contract with Ryzen. So WWE was not sure if I'm under contract. So they contacted me like not even like long time before the classic. It was like maybe three or four weeks before the Mayan classic. And I, I thought already, okay, the, there's no space for me anymore. So the dream is over. Um, but the, then they contacted me and say, hey, what about your contract status? Do you want to come over? I'm like, yeah, of course. And then everything was really quick. And I found myself in a performance center. And it was the time of my life, I can tell you. And I learned a lot there. And then I had this crazy match with Abby Lee. And everything was just so perfect. And all I can say, future will tell where this journey goes. Well, I got to tell you that here, um, we we actually held you pretty high here because of you know your background and your look and the way WWE likes you know certain wrestlers. I thought it would have been interesting. I thought maybe you would come down to seriously like the end of the uh, the May Young Classic. I thought you'd be in the finals. Um, Me too. <laughs> a, a lot of people chose you to be in the finals, and I. So when you lost yeah. so early, it was definitely a shock. Um, was that how it always was planned out, or did did they change something at some point? No, I, I would say, I don't know, to be honest. Like Maybe they just didn't really know me. I don't know. Maybe, of course, they think differently, but how can I say, right? But I don't know. There was a lot of disappointment in the tournament. Like I, I hear a lot of fans were like saying, why is Kelly Ray not you know, more advanced? Why is Alpha Female not advanced? And other girls, you know? Um, but I guess that's the game and in wrestling, thank God, it's not about winning or losing. Like sure, I lost in the first round and I'm out, but believe me, I, I'm one of the winners. Like the fans said my match was the match of the night or like on the tournament and many fans were really happy with it and I gained so many new followers and so many more interests. And here in Germany, I was in so many talk shows and I even managed to be like on a fitness magazine. So. The- Believe me, I feel like a winner from this tournament, so I don't care that I went out so early. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, even, even here it was a shocking type of moment, but yeah, it was good anyway. So it's very memorable because yeah. everybody, everybody was talking about it because there was so much hype before for you. Uh, uh, Ky- yeah. Kyrie Sane and, and you were the two people that I heard talked about the most here. But the thing is, any one of those women, you included, could have been, the whole tournament could have been built around somebody winning, so you winning, so that's why it's so tough. Everybody has, you know what I mean, is upset about their person uh, not making it, so, but I'm... Of course, of course, yeah. But yeah, I I was... I wish I I had, like, a match with with, uh, Kyrie Sane, because we, together, we went to Stardom, like, uh, we had many matches over there, and believe me... Like you can watch it on Stardom World. Uh, maybe some are on on YouTube. I don't know. Um, but my matches with her, they were insane. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> the funny thing is, like we are we are friends, you know, uh, Kyrie Sane and I. And um, but we became friends when I was in Japan, and uh, she didn't speak English, and I didn't speak Japanese. But but now things change. I speak more Japanese, and she speaks no more English. And when we met again at the May Young Classics, we were like going for, drink a coffee, and we were talking, you know. And then I said to her. Hey, dude, can you remember this match? Why did you, you know, hit me so hard? And she was like, I'm so sorry, and stuff like this. And it was just so funny because we have so many memory moments, which is really funny that we can talk about it now. So I really love this girl, and I think she has a big, bright future in WWE. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, and that, and that you guys are great. The chemistry is perfect for your sizes and the way you both compete. Mm-hmm. So, 
Um, I hope that you know that does happen at some point. But wh- wh- who did you speak with down there? Did you ever speak with you know uh, Triple H? Uh, you know what was your interaction like? Uh, like who was outstanding to me was definitely um, Shawn Michaels. Like oh my god, I love him so much. I loved him before, but now I love him even more. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course, I was I also able to speak to Triple H, but not so much. Uh, I was really, really surprised about the interview he gave when they asked him who stood out to him and he mentioned my name. I was like, wow, that's freaking incredible. Um, but yeah, my most, like the person I spoke most to was the, um, Kenyan Seaman. He's like the talent scout over there. So he was the one who was my, my talk to person, basically. That's cool that, uh, that you get to meet Sean and he was he was cool in person. I, I'm I'm 33, so I mean, I grew up a giant Shawn Michaels fan, so that would uh, yeah. be an epic moment. But yeah. now, I mean, Triple H, obviously, you know, those guys, there's a comparison to you. I don't know if it's become annoying yet with uh, you in China, um, yeah. obviously. Uh, so when you come over here, do people say that to you a lot? They bring up China or how you could be like the new, people say like, oh, it's the, you know, the new China, the something like yeah. that. Yeah, they say always Luna Vashaw, uh, Luna Vashaw and China. That's always what they say. And I would say I'm a mixture, you know, I'm both of them, I guess. Uh, and I, I had the honor to meet China and she was a lovely lady. Uh, and I would love to step in her f- footsteps, you know, and I would love to have this role. But then again, you know, I'm also not the youngest anymore. And with the whole visa thing I don't know like let's see what the future brings but I'm definitely ready for it and this is like my dream Uh, you know back in the day uh, 2008 I guess it was when I was on tour with Bret Hart and I was still trying to find my gimmick you know he said something to me which forever stuck in my head he said there's only two ways to find the perfect character for you Uh, on the one side you can take your own personality and make it 10 times stronger that means if you for example like a really funny person then just turn up the volume and be like the most funny guy in the ring um, or you choose a character you wish to see in the ring and when I I grow up like the girls they were all pro and panties you know and the girls were not really taken seriously and whenever I said to someone hey I'm a wrestler they were like oh you do like the bikini matches and this annoyed me like so crazy so I started to create the alpha female, you know, it took a while, but I always had like a vision of the alpha female. I wanted to be a strong, independent woman, you know, who just destroys everything in the way. And people who know me personally, they know I'm the total opposite. And you will not believe if I tell you, but I'm super shy and <laughs> I'm not really confident. Like there's many issues in my real life. For example, ordering food. Like this is the most embarrassing thing for me. But also female, she don't care. You know, she just, whatever comes her way, she destroys. And this is what I wanted to show in the ring. And it's really funny. Like lately, a lot of females come to me and say, hey, thank you for being different. Thank you for portraying that. And this was not really my my intention, you know. This just happened that I portray big, strong girls, you know. But it's it's cool, you know. This is exactly what I wanted. And I fr- I'm I- happy that I got the chance. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, I was just going to say, um, I, I did watch some of your YouTube channel and um, and some other, you know, videos. And I've sort of gotten to know you a little bit through that. And, yeah, you. it's funny how yeah. you are the opposite of yeah. the character. But... At the same time, it, the character works so well, you would have no idea because it, you, you that's how well you pull it off. So that's really good. But the other, yeah. I loved in the, um, you know, when I hear you say things like I pick up, I, I forget what you said, but you, it was something like you pick up little girls and break them or something. Yeah. And I just thought that was awesome. Like, yeah. it, it works perfectly. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, uh, now, what, now with, you no, know, you don't just do wrestling. You've done a lot of like MMA and some other type of fighting. Uh, tell me about yes. that. Okay, that happened because I went to Japan and wrestling over there is super freaking hard. Like it's it's challenging, and the training was so challenging. And because they are also little, they do a lot of high flight stuff and they do a lot of jump to the top rope stuff like this and I never really feel comfortable and I'm saying I, I can do this kind of training I'm sorry of course I don't want to be rude so I choose to go to MMA training instead you know 
Mm-hmm. And then 2015, I got released from Sado, and I was kind of in a hole, you know, and I did 2015, the, um, the trial for the WWE, and I was already 33 or something. And they said no to me, and I was like, oh, my gosh, like, this is the end. Like, what can I do? Uh, and then someone called me and said, hey, did you ever thought about doing MMA? And I was thinking, well, I'm a strong character in the ring, and maybe this would give me closure to be, you know. They say in WWE always, like, if there's a wrestler who's so long in the business, we can't change them or like they have to the direction how they need this. And so I wanted to show that everyone who was helping me that I do can learn still something even I'm like thirty three, right? And that I do can challenge myself and but I'm a legit badass fighter. <laughs> hey guys, that was about all we got before the connection went down. I hope you enjoyed uh Jazzy. She was awesome and I think she's gonna come back at some point soon. Definitely somebody to root for in the business. Um, very happy to see her in the Mae Young Classic, but hopefully we'll get more from her later. Hit her up on Twitter, let her know you heard the interview here on the Joe Cronin Show, and uh, we'll talk to you guys later.